Thank you, Steve. Good to see you guys. Man, yeah, I remember one of the first times, I think it was the first time I spoke, I shared my testimony, and I think there were like 30 guys in the room, okay? God is blessing the valley through each and every one of you and through this organization. And so thank you. Let's thank the Servants Council for all that work. I want to I want to admit something to you that I haven't admitted to anybody ever. And that is I look back on the last 7 decades of my life. I stop and I think, yeah, I stunted my own growth too often. Because I didn't pay attention to some of the basic fundamental things in life. I didn't listen to proper instructions. I didn't follow through on the things that I knew would have a dynamic impact on my life. And why is that? I think, I think to a person in the room, we can all look back and say, yeah, we had, we had success. We did some great things. And I do too. But I also look back and say, man, I wish I would have listened to that life lesson and taken it to heart, and acted on it. Things would have been richer. Maybe not different, but richer. I may have been more prepared for different things that I encountered in life had I done that. Today, I want to take us through three common life lessons, things that you can actually use tomorrow, if not today. So, I want us to, to look at Colossians here at first. And in his letter to the church in Colossae, Paul is talking in the first part, in the first chapter specifically, he's applauding the church for how they have come to receive Christ Jesus, how they have loved him and loved each other, and how they have moved their faith forward, how they've listened to instruction. Paul goes on and, and teaches them about the supremacy of Christ's being. And then he talks about his own ministry and how he labors uh, and why he labors, and that is to enrich their lives and their faith in Christ. And then we come to these verses in Colossians where he stops applauding them and starts to admonishing them. And so we pick it up. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught and overflowing with thankfulness. Now I want to point out just three things out of those two verses, and they're three metaphors. Metaphors are very common in Scripture, as you know. The first metaphor is rooted, where he is using an agricultural theme and talking about a seed that's planted and the growth that comes. And, and so that's, that's a really beautiful word picture that Paul uses there to say, you know what? The, the seed of Christ Jesus was planted in you and it is growing. Good for you. Then he switches immediately to an architectural metaphor, being built up. And what he's communicating there is that the church is already being built, right? We've got the foundation, the walls are up, it's all closed in. But man, we got trim work to do. We got a lot of other things. And so he's telling them, you know what? In this aspect of your lives right now where you're at, you're doing great, but we still got work to do, right? And then the third metaphor is where he's talking about being grateful and thankful for our position in Christ. And he talks about it overflowing. A metaphor that tells us it's not about a drip, guys, like it's a leaky faucet drip. You want to think about a container that's full of water that you've got water gushing into it and it is overflowing. That is the kind of gratitude that Paul is admonishing the church of Colossae to take forward. Here's the nuts and bolts of it. We're called to grow. 
right? So let's take a look at three common lessons, um, comparing ourselves to others perhaps, getting back to some basics, creating some muscle memory. And uh, so let, let's just jump right in. After all, I don't want Brandon to come bounce me off the stage. So we'll just try to keep this thing moving. Um, have you thanked him for the coffee? Do that before you leave. So he's doing a great job with that. Um, this is one of those life lessons that I, I look back on and say, gosh, I really stunted my growth because I was comparing myself to others. I want to be like, I want to be like Gordon Fortney. You don't know Gordon Fortney, but he was 6'8", and he was the best power forward we had on our high school basketball team. You know why I couldn't be Gordon Fortney? Because I didn't practice my dribbling. You got to be able to handle the ball first before you can, you know, make the team, right? I'll, I'll admit, I mean, this team in my junior and senior year had a 6'10 center. Gordon Fortney on one side at 6'7, another kid at 6'5 on the other side. And we had a 6'4 guy that sat the bench, and he was the first one off the bench as a guard. And there was no way I could handle the ball well enough to play guard at 6'3. So anyway, there's the story. But I, I stop and I think, you know, if I would have just listened to the first coach that I had, David, all you need to do right now is just practice dribbling right, left, right, left, run. Don't look at your dribble. Keep your head up on the court and just practice that over and over and over again. You'll get it. But that wasn't, that wasn't good enough. That, that, I wanted the reward of that shot. Give me the ball. Let me shoot. So I, I never became Gordon Fortney. It's okay. You know, I am who I am. But I think when we stop and we look at comparisons, it never does happen and we're miserable in the attempt. We just, it just drags us down. And so when you look at the left side of this uh, life lesson here, we need to use the success of others as inspiration. We need to say, you know what? That's beautiful. God's doing a great thing in his life, right? I need to, I need to do some of the nitty gritty stuff to, to, to be inspired to do that. Pilot your own development. Don't wait for somebody else to spoon feed you with what you think you need. Go find it and do it. You'll feel a lot better about yourself in terms of satisfaction and where you develop and you grow if you do it yourself. Don't wait for somebody else to, to feed you. Now, how does that look when we're on the faith side, on the right side of the equation? When you stop and you think a little bit about that, I wish I had faith like Jim or Tom or whoever. It's an easy comparison for us to get into. But what are we doing when we do that? We, we slow our own spiritual growth because we're not doing some of the fundamentals that got Jim and Tom and Ted and Scotty to that point in their faith walk. Because behind the scenes, they're practicing their dribbling, right? They're reading their Bible. They're spending time in prayer. They're meditating. They're finding ways to be active in their ministries. So when you stop and you, you look at that, there's great risks of questioning our salvation, of throwing in the towel and saying, I am never going to have the faith of a Rick. I'm never, I'm never going to have that faith. Why should I even try? We need to do the same thing here. We need to accept God's grace for our condition. We need to stay humble, yet confident in Christ in our role for that, and acknowledge that, you know what, when I'm comparing myself to others, I'm dishonoring God's design for myself. Right? 
I'm dishonoring how he intricately made me for his honor and glory because I'm trying to be like somebody else and I'm not working on me as he would want me to do. So when we see faith in others like Jim and Tom and Rick, we need to use them just the same way as we use others in life. And that is to inspire us to be stronger in our commitment to the Lord. 2 Peter 3.18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The word grow in Greek means make every effort. And that's where the substance of life comes in. When we make every effort to get the details down, the rest comes naturally. And God will see to it. So if you're going to compare yourself to anyone, compare yourself spiritually in your faith to you. Where were you a year ago? Where were you six months ago? Where do I want to be six months from now in my faith walk? And then act on it. So, let's talk just a little bit about getting back to basics. Arguably, I think two of the most prolific coaches in professional and and college sports were Vince Lombardi for the Green Bay Packers and John Wooden of the UCLA Bruins. You know what, besides their winning cultures, what those two coaches had in common? Basics. They both began every new season at the basics. Vince Lombardi would gather the rookies and the veterans and everybody all around in that summer camp, and he'd say, gentlemen, this is a football. And he'd hold it up, and he'd go through the dimensions of it, and he'd talk about how to hold it and how to carry it and everything. I mean, everything about the football. John Wooden, when he began every season, that began in the locker room. It wasn't on the court. Get your socks off. We're going to put them on right. And he trained every student athlete for that basketball team how to put their socks on so that they wouldn't get sores on their feet and that wouldn't be impede their ability to play. The basics. Stuff we don't see. Stuff we don't sometimes even consider. We brush our teeth every morning. We do it unconsciously. Some of those basketball players that John Wooden taught how to put their socks on still do the same thing today. If they're still alive. So, yeah. Uh, By the way, there's no old guys in here. They're just seasoned people, okay? (laughs) Is that right? Seasoned, I love that. So, when we think about the basics of life, when we think about our health, when we think about our career, when we think about our disposition, are we down in the dumps or are we happy? Are we content? When we think about those things, it should cause us to stop and think, am I doing some of the basics and the fundamentals that I need to do? Uh, you know, if, if, if you need help financially, talk to Joel, right? And just, you know, get the help. There's plenty of help in this group. There's plenty of help in faith. And that is something that we want to really focus in on, too. Uh, in your career, work where your passion is. If, if you're working and you feel like, ah, this is just a job. I, here comes Monday and please Friday comes soon, you know. There's a couple things I'd like you to, to check. First, Where is your passion? And if your passion isn't in that particular position and role, find out what you need to do to pilot your own development to get to that passionate position. But here's the other important thing I need you to know. And it's a statement that my father taught me, and some of you have seen other places, so it's not original to my dad. David, the grass 
isn't always greener on the other side of the fence. But it's always greener where you water it. It isn't always leaving a job to find another one just to go through the same stuff again. Sometimes we need to look introspectively and say, how can I develop to, to get the best, to serve the best in this role, even though it's, to me, just a job at this point? God is using that in your life to take you to the next level. And he's preparing you. And if you're feeling like you're stuck, you might not just be prepared enough to move to the next. It's another one of those little life lessons that I wish I'd have learned earlier than when I finally did. What about the basics of faith? Develop your love for God. Love is an action. It requires us to do some things. So, stop trying to just love God without practicing some of the things that are necessary to do that. All of you are practicing it this morning on Saturday mornings coming here. All of you hopefully are practicing it Saturday evening or Sunday morning when you're going to your house of worship and, and getting fed the scriptures. But I'm reminded of Dr. Howard Hendricks, who is a professor of theology that I happen to have an acquaintance with, not a deep personal knowledge of and friendship with, but a, an acquaintance of his uh, when we lived in Dallas-Fort Worth. And I remember him talking to uh, a group of people in the church one morning, and he said, you know, we we have an issue. We We talk about spending money and taking time and running out and and going to a conference halfway across the country and investing that money and you know doing all of these things and come back really pumped up for Christ and that's fine and good and nothing wrong with those unless we're not willing to get up out of our chair walk across the room take the bible off the bookshelf come back and sit down and spend a little bit of time in God's word right? He's right. We sometimes, we'll go to great expense and time and resources and energy, and we'll go to these conferences, and there's nothing wrong with that. But when we really look inside ourselves, we say, gosh, what's my personal life with Christ? You got to read your Bible. And it doesn't matter how much time you take. Just read a verse or two, think about it, pray it, and start practicing that. That's where that action comes in. Let's not forget about what Scott Irwin teaches us regularly when he comes and speaks, and that's to plant God's Word in our hearts. Right? Because that's one of those practices that gives us the tools we need to face the troubles of life. And I can't can't tell you just how much that has really meant to me. Luke writes, But the seed on good soil stands for those with a noble and good heart who hear the word, retain it, and by persevering produce a crop. We need to start and maintain the basics of life to keep our faith intact. The key word here is persevering. It takes intent. You have to be intentional about the activities of growing your faith. It takes sacrifice. You have to say no to some things. You might have to say no to a basketball game in the Final Four just to say, gosh, I, need, I haven't spent time. I haven't done what I need to do. It takes a growth mindset. It's a goal-driven mindset that I'm going to take my faith from here to here by when, right? And to do that, I need to do something daily. That's where it comes down to it. So compare yourself to you. Compare your spiritual maturity to you. And 
start and maintain some of the basics of your faith. So let's, uh, let's go on to this last one, build muscle memory. I ran across this acronym called MOM uh, that I thought was pretty good. It's pretty easy to remember. Uh, motivation, observation, mechanics. And how many, how many in the room have struggled at any time in your life uh, with remembering somebody's name? It's, it's like, yeah, yeah. And, and so this is where I picked this up. It was like, I need to, need to kind of remember people's names. I need to get better at that. Why? Because first of all, they're child of God. Right? They're here for a purpose. And one of the cool things we have is to find out what their purpose is. Pretty cool when you stop and think about that. So the first thing is you want to, you want to learn somebody's names for a purpose. You, you want to in, put that in your, in your heart. This is why I want to do that. So on the life side, if you want to learn somebody's name, here are the basics. Know that you want to connect with them, have a passion for other people, and then teach and serve others how to remember people's names. All right? Observe when you meet them, be present, be attentive to what they do, what they say, how they say it. Be attentive to whatever it is that comes through that conversation. Listen and be silent. Those two different things. Listen closely to what the person is, is saying and be silent in your mind. Shut your mind off to listen because we're constantly thinking, how can I do better with this, right? Mechanics are start with why you want to learn and align that with the why. Same thing applies to faith. When you stop and you think a little bit about that principle, what we're talking about is read the word. That's the no part. Read the word. Meditate. Take that word and put it into your heart. And then act on it. Teach it and serve it uh, that way. Be present, attentive to God's leading. See God's image in others. As you serve, see God's image in others. Some are hard to see, but if you look deep enough, you'll see it. Start with why and align that. The verse that I like to call out here is 1 Corinthians. Therefore, my beloved brothers, be steadfast and movable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. Consistency. Practice consistency in your faith walk. Steadfast. Put blinders on so that you're not distracted. Keep your focus on that, on that goal. Be immovable. Don't give in to shortcuts. If you've read Pilgrim's Progress, follow the narrow way. Don't look for the shortcut that's going to lead you off into destruction. Because they're all over the place. And they're, they're enticing, and they're easy to get to. So, when you stop and you think, why learn these lessons? It's because we want to have true faith. And Paul David Tripp says this, True faith lies on the basis of two unshakable realities, that God really does exist, and that he always rewards those who seek him. He writes, grace has positioned me on these two foundational stones that have redefined my identity, redirected my purpose, rescued my thoughts, and reformed my living. I have new reason to get up in the morning and face my day with courage, hope, joy, confidence, and rest. So, compare your spiritual maturity to yourself. Start and maintain the basics of your faith. And finally, get some muscle memory. Practice some consistency. And give your faith to Christ. Let me pray with you. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, 
I thank you for this room full of men who are constantly seeking after you. We have guys here this morning that have had tough weeks, and yet they found their way to get out of bed this morning and come and spend some time with their fellow brothers in Christ. We have guys who have heavy concerns on their minds, who are struggling with one thing or another, or are fearful of something, or who are, are so overjoyed in other ways, and yet feel the responsibility and load of raising a family and being a loving husband or a caregiver to someone who's ill. We lift our needs and our time up to you, Lord. You are our refuge and our strength. And we love you. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. 